I saw it in his eyes. He never got over my leaving him. I just kept it to myself about the baby. After Charles and I divorced, there were some affairs. But in those days, honey, certain things weren't talked about. Well, not in polite society. In the 1930s and 40s, there weren't just double standards. There were triple standards. All those phony, holier-than-thou types. I've never confided this before, but I had an abortion. Charles never knew. I'm not answering. She had no right to hang up on me like that. A child wasn't possible. It would have interfered. My career was going well, you see. So many opportunities. But you have to show up, honey. Out of sight, out of it. And I was an it girl. It was a whirlwind. The party. Glamorous parties here in New York, the ones back in New Orleans. Oh, Lord. But David used to beg me to come out to the coast for some audition. We used to model clothes for Chanel, jewelry from Tiffany's, furs. Oh, yes. They would dress you up, send you with an escort to some penthouse party. Honey, those escorts never took their eyes off of you, sashaying around with all that expensive jewelry. But I didn't dare take more than a minute powder in my nose. I was never intimidated by the society crowd. I'm a Holden. Henleys and Coopers on Mama's side. Related all the way back to Anne Boleyn on Daddy's side. She may have lost her head, but she was royalty, honey. Don't call here again. I'm not speaking to you. I always had drive. But Papa used to say, nothing will ever stop my little Ella. That's what they named me. Ella Angeline. Well, you can see, two country, two southern. I changed it when I started acting here in New York. Phyllis, smart, sophisticated, suited me perfectly. When I met her father, I was at a turning point, close to 40. Things change at that age. He was handsome, so tall, that European 
elegance. Oh, don't misunderstand. I was still beautiful, maybe more so. There's a richness that develops. In certain cases, experience adds to the charm of physical beauty. We met at a party. I didn't think much of it. But he courted me with a fierce determination. Such stubbornness it was. Later, I realized how damn impossible he can be. But then, he was different from the usual crowd, softer somehow. There was an innocence. I remember the exact moment when I fell in love with him. It was spring 1946, Easter time. He came to my place to pick me up. It was a junior four on the Upper East Side, perfect bachelor girl apartment. Funny. I remember the hat I was wearing. It was a beautiful little hat, a few flowers across the brim, and a very delicate veil that came just so over my eyes. I love that hat. I love hats. Always look good in them. Robert brought a basket full of Easter eggs. And here's the funny part. He had dyed them all himself. Purple and pink and blue. He could be so very sweet like that. We married later that year, in the fall. He was a catch, honey. His father was one of the founders of Royal Dutch Shell very successful, socially prominent here in New York and back in San Francisco. But he was lazy when it came to social connections. When you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you just don't know how bleak this world can be. I know. I know how important the A-list is. I made it my job to get in. I worked at it, and I do mean worked. All those luncheons with the old biddies from the DAR and the Dixie Club, bridge parties at the plaza, you needed to be sponsored to get into the best clubs. Sometimes three letters of recommendation were required. I sat on the phone all day long, day after day, cozying up to everyone that counted. When you've been deprived of your rightful place in society. I felt those awful, 
icy cold snubs. Will you either lay down dead and get yourself squashed like those horny toads on the road. Or you pull yourself together and make them all take notice. And I'm no quitter, honey. She never understood. She was born with that silver spoon in her ungrateful mouth, too. Well, to hell with them. See how far you get in this world without the right connections. Talent and achievement only take you so far, honey. Social standing trumps them all. I was almost 43 when she was born. I prayed for a little girl. I had this wonderful dream. I was lying in bed and this perfect little girl in a beautiful pink dress was sitting at the foot of my bed, waving at me. When they brought her to me, so tiny, her little fist wrapped around my finger and held on so tight. I've never felt anything like that before or since. I never spoke that silly baby talk to her. I had studied speech at the American Academy when I first came to New York. Beautiful speech good manners. Knowing which fork to use, yes. All this degenerate hippie nonsense today doesn't mean a thing compared to well-bred behavior. Always has and always will, honey. Robert had had a nervous breakdown. It was after his play failed. Oh, it failed miserably. Closed after 10 performances. All those high hopes. He couldn't take it. The rejection. This world is a hard, cold place. You need grit and determination. Robert is all dreams and delusions. Make believe. Like those pretty Easter eggs. But you can't live on painted Easter eggs, honey. Well, not for long anyway. I 
I don't remember when she turned on me. That's the price I've had to pay. I tried to prepare her for this world. Well, of course he's more popular. It's easy to lead a child around with candy and pipe dreams. Did I tell you about the dream I had just before she was born? Yes. In that pretty pink dress, reaching out her little arms to me. I have no regrets. I know what is right. Unrealistic expectations and magical thinking don't do anyone any good. I don't need her to love me now. can choose what I am needing I can dust it off the shelf I won't side with revision I'm effectively driven to sweet vanity so good I believe it the style fits like a glove and I can wear it when I need it I can run away from love bathed in alcoholic wonder tonight we will slumber 